Well, all right, all right, all right. Welcome, everybody. We are live streaming right now on Facebook. We're live streaming on multiple YouTube channels. And I want to welcome you to the show. Welcome to Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. And I'd like to let everybody know if this is your first time tuning in, a very, very special welcome. What we do here on the show is we talk about everything that relates to real estate investing from how do you find deals before other real estate investors know about them? How do you get your deals funded without relying on your banker or your mortgage broker or your hard money lender? Uh, how are you able to flip and sell properties quickly? How do you automate the business? And we talk about single family houses, commercial, um, the land deals, self storage, and the most important piece of real estate that we talk about is the real estate that exists between your ears. As you all have heard me say, uh, it's hard to really control real estate that you stand on until you control and own the real estate that's in between your ears. So yes, we talk about mindset and the type of things and the kind of thought process that a successful real estate investor ought to have. So as we're kicking off, uh, we love to hear where people are tuning in from. So if you are tuning in live from Facebook right now, or if you are watching us on YouTube, uh, go to the comment section right below the video and let us know where you're tuning in from. Say hello. What's your first name? What's your city and state? And uh, also, uh, if you have any questions, I'm sure you will, and comments about what we're going to be talking about on the show today. Uh, be sure and put those in the comment section below. Um, if you've been tuning in to Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor over the last year and a half or so, you know I've had amazing experts and guests here on the show, and today is no exception. Today on today's show, I'm going to be, we're going to be, my guest is actually going to be talking about the five ways that you can dominate your market to where you get customers actually chasing you instead of you having to chase and locate customers. But before I introduce my special guest, my good friend today, uh, I want to let everybody know right around the corner, I have got a live event coming up that you definitely want to take a look at attending. And because you're tuning in here on uh, the podcast or you're watching YouTube or Facebook, I've got a free ticket for you and your guests to attend this is called uh, the Real Estate Investing Cash Flow Conference. By the way, hello, uh, Ogs Fish Room from New York, New York. Thank you for tuning in. We see you saying hello. Uh, but this upcoming event, uh, the Real Estate Investing Cash Flow Conference, it's three days. It's February 26th, 27th, and 28th, 2020. It's right around the corner. And uh, we'll just go ahead and put up the uh, website that you can go check it out right now. You get to attend for free. It's www.jayconner.com -E forward slash live event. And at that event, you're going to learn how to find deals ahead of the real estate investing competition. In fact, when you locate deals the way we'll show you at this conference, you won't have any competition. We'll have private lenders at the event for you to network with. So if you're looking for more funding for your deals, this conference is definitely the place for you to be. And we'll be teaching automation, how you automate the business, how you can actually do this business in less than 10 hours per week. And all that you need to know. So if you're a seasoned real estate investor or you're brand new, it doesn't matter. This is a conference you want to check out. Again, get on over to www.jayconner, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R dot com forward slash live event. Again, if you're just tuning in with us now and you've got comments or questions regarding the um, subject matter that we're going over here with my special guest here in just a second, be sure and say hello in the comment section and give us your questions and give us your con and give us your comments. Well, on with the show. I'm so excited to have as my guest today, Max, my good friend, that we've known each other for quite a while now. Max, I'll tell you a little bit about Max's background. Max's relationship with his grandmother actually inspired his mission and what a mission Max has got. And the mission is to assist as many seniors and families as he can. 
And here's the background. You see, Max was able to help his grandmother with her own home challenges. However, not everyone has the type of support system in place that he was able to provide for his grandmother. So a little bit of background on Max. He's got over 15 years of experience in real estate, finance. He's also a trainer and a coach to real estate investors. And so a few hats that he's currently wearing are real estate investor, consultant. He's an author of a best-selling book that he'll tell you about. He's a fantastic speaker. I've seen him take the stage. He, he mesmerizes his audiences. And he's also an expert panelist. Well, he has flipped over 100, 100 houses. And he's on a mission to help real estate agents and real estate investors have, as I said a moment ago, customers and clients chasing them instead of you having to chase and locate your own customers and clients. Well, he's also the creator and owner of Savior Publishing House, which is a publishing business as a way to serve his community and also help seniors with their real estate challenges. Uh, the Savior brand that Brad Max has is a brand of companies that focus on providing Christian real estate and business solutions to their clients. And of course, Max, like our other good friends, enjoys spending time with his wife and his children and engaging in family activities. He's very involved in his church, as I and my wife, Carol Joy, are. And he's passionate, like I am, about investing time with his family and in real estate. So folks, don't go anywhere. If you're tuning in live or you're listening or watching the podcast, we're getting ready to pull the curtain back right now. For Mr. Max Keller. Hey, Max, how are you, my man? I'm doing great. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Hello, everybody. We're, we're Max, looking forward so to help. Glad you could, so glad you could come here and be on the show. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, as I said just a moment ago, we're going to talk about the five ways to for folks here to learn how to dominate their market, get customers and clients chasing them. So again, folks, for those of you that are tuning in live, go ahead and uh, type in and say hello, where you're from in the comments section and put in your questions and your comments as we get into the interview. So um, a little bit more, uh, Max, when it comes to a real estate investor or agent learning to dominate their market, how is it that you're qualified to even talk about this subject? Yeah, great question. Well, um, you know, I started out in real estate about 15 years ago, started buying rental properties. I was doing it part time. And um, at the time I was working in finance, I, I was a math teacher for seven years before um, I started getting into real estate full time. And really, for me, I just had the plan of just staying in real estate part time. I love teaching. I love teaching math. I worked at an inner city school and I loved, um, yeah, just loved helping the kids. So I had no plans on leaving. Uh, real estate really started to grow. I went full time. I flipped about 100 houses, about 120 houses in a three year period in Dallas, Fort Worth with a team of three people. And, you know, what happened was, is <clears throat> I would go to, you know, I got about halfway through my deals, maybe six deals, 60. And I started to feel kind of burnt out. You know, can anybody relate to uh, the grind that it can be, you know, visiting customers, um, feeling like there's like five or six more people right behind you. There's a lot of competition in Dallas, Fort Worth, and a lot of cities uh, people are listening to. And so, I don't know, it felt like a major grind. And um, so I made a list of of the, the deals that I had that I enjoyed working with the customer the most and the deal that I made the most money on. And both categories that led to seniors. And so I... Um, I just couldn't be everywhere. I love working with seniors. They're my best clients. Uh, most of them were, you know, I bought so much. I mean, I met with hundreds and hundreds and we've impacted thousands of seniors through now the book system. But, um, but yeah, I've been investing full time and, you know, I, I, I uncovered a little secret that I'm going to share with your audience today that really 10 X my results. Sounds great, Max. So I tell you what, let's go ahead and uh, jump in. Okay the the ways to dominate the market and get customers chasing you but before we do that give everybody a little teaser um about um your book i mean your book is just fascinating you gave me a copy of it mm -hmm. a few months ago when you attended my live event tell folks about your book and 
And uh, I'm sure you've got something that you're going to give the audience here uh, after we get to the end of the interview. Yeah, absolutely. Stay till the end and um, I'll let you know where that is. We'll put a code in that you can get something. But basically, long story short is that I was going to meet with seniors. My grandma helped take care of me for the first 15 years of my life. And then I took care of her for the last 15. I met my wife at church, taking my grandma to church. So I love seniors and I'm, I'm in these seniors homes. Um, I'm, I'm meeting with them and they need a lot of help. You know, they are husbands passed away. They own their house outright, but they don't necessarily have a lot of other assets, maybe a little social security, maybe a pension. And their family members, their adult children are grown and they live all over the country. And so there's just all these challenges. And, you know, I would, the seniors could tell that number one, I knew what I was talking about. Number two, I wanted to help them and they would never let me leave. You know, I was there for like three, four hours and I was like, well, I can only go to like two appointments a day. I had somebody else in acquisitions that was helping me buy homes, but I wanted something more scalable. And what I found was, is that if I got to the senior and helped them, they got help. But there were so many seniors out there that didn't have, you know, somebody really looking out for them. And they were just at the mercy of whatever, you know, straight commission salesperson they called from the phone book that, um, you know, they were just hoping that they would come through. And a lot of times they didn't. And that made me, you know, kind of angry. I really wanted to, to help these people that I didn't know. So I'm like, well, what can I do? So what I did was I created my first book. I've read a lot of books since then, um, but it's Home to Home, the Step-by-Step -step Senior Housing Guide. And in this book, it's all the ways that seniors can um, sell their home, pros and cons to each, the different ways that they can keep their home, the types of senior housing that's available, how much it costs, how to pay for it. And then I wrote a chapter to the adult children. So this is basically like seven hours of all the questions that I was getting, Jay, in the living room of these seniors. So I started to give this book out and these seniors were investing seven hours with me, but I wasn't there. My book was. And then a lot of other magical things happen. So that's number one. If you want to get more customers in your business and you want to have customers chasing you, you have to change the perception of, of the way that your customer sees you in their mind. If they see you as just, you know, another person, a dime a dozen, um, one of millions of real estate investors or uh, realtors in their area, you know, that's not good. You know, when I go to a customer's house and I give them a copy of my book, I sign it. We take a picture together. Um, they come to one of my workshops and I give them a copy of my workbook, uh, which is a whole nother story. And we'll get to that. But when I give them this and I teach this workshop of how to navigate this really difficult time in the homeowner's journey um, at a church, at a senior center, at a CPA office, probate attorney office, it changes the way that the customers perceive me. Now I'm the expert and they're not calling other people. So the number one way for folks that are listening to get more customers and to have whatever your business is, but we're just talking real estate. That's my specialty um, is to change the way they perceive you. So that's number one. So number one way to get people chasing you is change the way they perceive you. And are you saying the way you have gotten your customers to change the way they perceive you is by becoming an author and writing a book? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, when I speak now, I'll give you a perfect example. My wife, we're involved in our church, like you and your wife. My wife works at our church. You know, when I was Max Buys Homes, and then I changed my name to Savior Realty, like our Lord and Savior, the pastor of the church, other churches, they didn't want me to come and speak to their group because you got to understand these pastors and these senior centers, they, they have, you know, they're the shepherds of their flock and they have to make sure they have to be very careful who they let in because they don't want to hurt their flock. But there's so many seniors that need this curriculum. We wrote curriculum that we haven't been able to find anywhere else. And it's for people who, you know, really, really need it. So before, when it was just Max buys homes and Savior Realty, same guy, same same person, same flesh, I wasn't I wasn't getting those speaking opportunities. But now, when I'm the author of the book, the workbook, I call up local churches and I say, you know, um, you know, we have a, a workshop that we'd like to teach, and you know, I'm a local author. Then all of a sudden, they're letting me in, you know, like, oh, thank God for you, you know, and I'm speaking to 30, 40 of their congregation at a time. So Max didn't change. The information I had in my mind that I could share didn't change, but the perception changed and it was through becoming an author. So that's why number one is so powerful. And that actually leads us into number two. All right. Number two. Yeah, so number two is promote your book, not you. 
So a lot of people in very regulated industries have been using this for a long time. You know, you have to be very careful if you're a financial advisor and you have a securities license, what you put on a billboard, because there's a lot of restrictions. So what folks started to figure out was, is if they wanted to promote themselves, they would write a book and then they would just promote and talk about the book. And so when you start per- talking about your book, it takes the conversation away from this being like a transaction, uh, a sales situation. You know, sometimes in a sales situation, people get defensive. They keep the walls up. But when you're just talking about the book and you're having a conversation, the whole thing changes. I'll give you an example. We do direct mail. We still market for homes. I have licensees that we'll get to later that um, use my book system, lead generation system all over the country. And so they'll still send out mail, but they'll also say, they'll list a benefit statement of what their service can do. And then they'll say at the bottom, oh, by the way, if you're not ready to sell your house now, uh, we wrote the book on senior housing. You can go to Amazon and buy a copy, or you can give us a call and we'll send you a copy for free. And that's actually how we got our first customer. It wasn't by promoting ourselves. It was by promoting our book. We sent out some flyers to homes in an area where I know there's a lot of seniors that live. We made a off. We let them know that they could get a copy of the book. A customer called and said they wanted a copy of the book. And it was so natural because think about it. When they call, well, where do you want us to send the book? So we have their address. We have their contact info. And then um, my assistant said, okay, Max is going to give you a call in a couple weeks to see how you like the book. Not if you're ready to sell your house right now. You know, I think people who are listening who are in real estate can relate to follow-up calls sometimes feeling awkward. I felt that way. I never liked um, the way it, just the way it felt. But with a book, it's really easy because I just call the customer back two weeks later and I just say, hey, I don't say, hey, when are you going to hurry up and sell your house so I can make some commission? (laughs) You know, like that's. And I'm not saying people who are listening say that, but sometimes it like comes off that way. You know, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. And so, but for me, I just call them up. I just say, hey, we sent you a copy of the book. Hey, Mavis, we sent you a copy of the book. How'd you like it? And our first customer that we got from a book in Haltom City, Texas, that's what happened. She said, I love the book. I read it cover to cover. I'm pretty much set. Um, I'm going to stay where I'm at, but my neighbor needs help. So I took my walker and went across the street and gave her your book and she's going to call you. And long story short, that's that's how it worked. And she called us and we got our cust- that customer from the book. So promote the book is number two. Um, very crucial. Well, here's the thing, Max. I know uh, we've got a lot of people here uh, watching the show or listening to the show and they're scratching their heads saying, Max, that sounds great, but I never wrote a book. I don't know how to write a book. Uh, yeah, I know my industry. Yeah, I know what I'm doing. I've got an expertise. I've got a, I've got a niche, but where in the world do I start on writing a book? I mean, like I'm already, I mean, I'm already feeling overwhelmed. How do I do that? Sure. Yeah. Well, I can help them with that. Well, if you stay till the end, that's part of our special gift. So I'll just spill the beans. I'm going to give you a copy for free, um, of the template that I use before I write any book. I mean, I, I, I use it for every book. I don't know what else to say. So I'm going to share that with you all. So if you want, there's a lot of different ways. So first of all, you can write your own book or you can plug into somebody else's book or you can create a book lit. You don't have to start out with a book. You know, like I started out with this book and yeah, it was pretty challenging. Now I have people, if you're in real estate, you can plug into our system. And I'll talk about that at the end, but you know, this is Robert Kelly and he's in Richmond, Virginia. We have a network of people all over the nation. There's opportunities like this where you can white label and personalize an existing book, and it's a lot faster and quicker way to deploy your book. So you can write your own book, and I'll give you the tools to where you can learn how to do that. Um, you can plug into somebody else's book system, so um, like ours or somebody else's, so you can find out about that. Or you can create a booklet. But that actually kind of goes to number three, Jay, which is one of the reasons that books are so powerful whatever you create, a lot of people listening, especially people who maybe have written some articles or some blog posts, they actually have the content that they need for a book. They just don't know how to arrange it. So number three way that you get a lot of leverage from a book is content marketing. You know, everybody right now, when your customers, when they're going online to look you up, they're seeing what's there. And if you're not online at all, you know, that can be a problem. So it's like, How do you fill in that information? Well, what's cool about a book is if you make the commitment to either write your own book, a booklet, or plug into somebody else's book system, 
you do it once and then you basically have all the content that you need for life, you know, so that's, that's a huge benefit, but yeah, to get started, it's actually, I mean, there are really, really good books out there, uh, published and book in a box method or two books that I read that are really good that teach you how to write a book. You know, how long will it take? I mean, I don't know. It took me hundreds of hours. You know, I'm dyslexic. I only read like seven books for the first 35 years of my life. And then I found out from my friends that reading was so important. And all my friends who were doing really well, I were reading a lot. So I got with a dyslexia coach and I just got better at it. And I read I mean, a couple hundred books and then I started writing books. So I would just say to your audience, Jay, a lot of people think things are really hard when they don't you know, even have any idea how to start. But it doesn't mean they're that hard. You know, if I'm dyslexic and I wrote a lot of books, um, everybody in your audience can. They just don't know how. And I'll I'll show them I'll show them how and I won't charge them anything. Well, I tell you what I like already. I like just plugging into what's already done so I don't have to do the work and just white label what you've got and you slap my picture on the front of the book. That's what I like. Yeah, we can do that. I mean, it's a little more than that, but um it's it's not it's not a lot. Yeah, what we do, I'll just tell you what we do. Is like, uh, you know, for Robert, when he wanted to be in our book system, we take the we take the book and we take the the workbook and we keep most of it the same because it's it's curriculum. It's a reference document. It's a teaching document. But we personalize and create local editions for people all over the nation. So we have a form that Robert fills out or um, now we have a Zoom call and we can ask all the questions. We take the content from the book and we write basically Robert into it and create a unique book that's telling Robert's story that has Robert's contact information that tells the story of what we're trying to do with Save Your Publishing House through a network of local experts like Robert and people all over the coast. We have people from California to Connecticut and they're using this in their local market and they're generating leads. They're going into places where they never were able to go to before and, um, and you know market their business and it's through teaching. And, you know, people who do well in our program usually hit one or two boxes. They check both boxes. They love seniors and they just have like a special place. Maybe it was like a grandma or grandparent who had like a special place in their heart. Um, you know, they, they just love seniors. They're already going to senior centers. They just they like seniors and then they like to, you know, teach and help people and grow their business. And that's really that's kind of goes to number four, which is influencers. You know, right, hang on, hang on, Max. Yeah. Take a breath. Take a breath. Sure. Before you get to number four, we just had a, a good question come in from James, who is tuning in live, and his question is plagiarize? Question mark. So I think what James is asking is, how is when you're offering people to uh, use your book and plug into your book system, how is that not plagiarizing? Yeah, so that's a great question. Uh, so they they license the rights to use my curriculum. People white label. Um, if you look up white labeling, it's been around for you know hundreds of years, and books have been around for four thousand. So it's a really so really plagiarizing is when you steal. Yeah, you don't have permission. You steal somebody else's work mm -hmm. without them giving permission for you for them for you to use their work. Uh, yeah. So it's not plagiarizing because hmm. you are actually licensing and people are paying for the right to use your copy. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Anytime that you have something that you can multi-purpose, that's a great way to, to leverage your knowledge is to let other people use it. And yeah, in, in this world, you know, folks are very, very busy and they want results and they're looking for shortcuts. And so if you have a way to get people results faster, um, and it can help a lot of people. Yeah, they, um, you know, you can license it. Mm -hmm. That's so, what we do. so just to recap where we are so far, getting people, for those that are just tuning in live now, we're talking about how to dominate your market, how to get customers and clients chasing you yep. instead of you chasing them. And Max Keller here, the expert, he's got five steps to do it. Step number one is change your customer's perception of you. And that is become an author, become the expert. Mm -hmm. Have your own book. Uh, number two is once you got the book, promote the book, not yourself. So now you've got like this third party entity thing, your book, that's actually your credibility. And then you said step number three is content marketing. Take another second and tell people, what do you mean by content marketing? Yeah, so content marketing is basically sharing information and knowledge through, you know, whether it's uh, audio, whether it's, you know, print, 
But content marketing is basically taking the content or information that your ideal customer wants to know about and teaching it to them, you know, presenting it online. And so content marketing can be blogs, it can be podcasts, it can be articles. And so what I've been able to do, and it's been kind of a superpower of being an author, is that once you create um, a book or plug into somebody else's book system, you know, you you have permission to use your information or um, somebody else's book information. You can use all of that content in the book and repurpose it a lot of different ways. Like I could open up, I guarantee I could just open to any page here in the workbook, any page. I'll just turn, well, I'll turn to the one that's got a tab on it. Okay. So how much will you really make? There's some hidden costs when you sell a home. We're going to walk through some of these costs and it's like a case study. So I, could I shoot a video and just talk about this case study? Is it a topic that somebody's interested in? Yeah, that's what content marketing is. Content is about, is about the teaching first, not just um, a sales letter. It's about giving first um, the content or information that your customer wants and then you know offering your product and service later. And that's actually kind of kind of one of the secret sauces to this book, Jay. Is that, and I'll 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 let you go, and then I'll tell you. Go ahead. No, so, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, so one of the interesting things is that when you have a book, um, I see people make a lot of mistakes when they write books. I have a lot of people contact me, and they say, Max, like this is really cool. I want to use the my book the way that you're doing it, or I want to white label the book, or I want to create a book. A lot of times when people call me, they've already written a book. Um, I mean, there's not that much we can do with it. You'd have to rewrite the whole thing. You know, I don't write uh, poetry. You know, I write uh, lead generation books. Uh, it's just, it's a special genre. I, I have friends who have a lot of different kinds of books. Sometimes they pay like, you know, $5,000 to write one chapter in a book about a time they overcame like their greatest fear. And so they can give it to people and say, oh, look, I'm in a book. And I go over to their houses and I'm, there's like a big stack of those books there. I'm like, hey, what's going on with your book? And they're like, well, when I received it, I gave it out to my friends. And then, you know, like that's about it. So here's kind of the point, Jay, is that the reason content marketing is so powerful is because your customer does not care about you. Your customer cares about solving their problem. And content marketing is all about the answers and solutions to the problems your customer's having. And that's what made this book work is that it's 99.99% .99 about the customer, the rest about me. And the other secret sauce where people make a lot of mistakes is if they write a book or a booklet, they have a bunch of different options in the book that the customer can take, but all the options point to them. And if you do that, it's just a big sales letter. So in this book, I have a lot of options and places that seniors can go to and they're adult children, but not all the options point to me. And when all I just connect them to people, you know, for free. And so when you start doing that, you're seen back to number one, you're perceived differently as the foundational source and the credible connector, um, not just uh, another salesperson. Perfect. Strategy number four. Influencers. I did not know that this was going to happen at all. And I want to be real clear. When I wrote this book um, and workbook, I didn't have any intentions. I didn't know I'd be on here today. Like I didn't know other people would want to use it. I just wrote it for me because I was just trying to scale my knowledge and serve others. And then when my friends and masterminds, I'm in a lot of masterminds like you are, found out about it, they're like, hey, you know, these are the influencers, right? They're like other people and leaders in the market. They're like, hey, you know, we like helping seniors. We like teaching. We like getting more customers. You know, how can we get involved? And that's how we came up with the co-author program. But I didn't know that that would actually be one of the biggest levers is not just how your customers perceive you differently. But when you write a book, it's incredible how differently your peers perceive you. You know, we had a licensee. I'll give you a perfect example. Somehow his book got um, introduced to the mayor of Winter Haven, Florida. Do you think there's some seniors in Winter Haven, Florida, Jay? You reckon? Yeah, reckon, exactly. So out in your neck of the woods too, they're everywhere. So the mayor got a hold of the book. The mayor's an influencer. Okay, the mayor wasn't talking to this licensee, our co-author before, didn't even know who he was. Now he reads the book and he's like, wow, this is unbelievable. How do we get this out to all the different you know, agencies in our city? How do we get this person speaking at all these different places? So that's really where you see the power. Like we have, I'll give you another example. I spoke at a probate attorney association for our county. There's like 50 probate attorneys. I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about the book. I'm teaching things that these probate attorneys care about because they have parents. They have senior clients. 
And at the end, there was about 50 people there. Maybe 15 people came up and got a copy of the book. I made pretty close relationships with about five of them. And now I have probate attorneys all over the city and they've got a stack of books on my desk. At any time they hear kind of that somebody's going through a house issue, they don't do houses. You know, they do the attorney stuff and they give them a copy of my book and then the person calls me. And so that's where influencers can really, really ratchet it up. And that's why number four is so powerful. You literally will have, you can get an army of people in your city if you have a book to be passing your book out. They know your customer. They've known your customer for 20 years. And when your customer calls you and say, Janice at, you know, the church gave me your book. Now all of a sudden, you know, Janice has known her for 20 years and now you've known her for 20 years. So I've never found anything that accelerates, you know, the relationship process. And I want to, before I forget, mention this, you know, people overcomplicate marketing and they talk, they, 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 they think marketing is, is, you know, the blog or the podcast marketing is trust, trust. That's it. Your, your customer has to trust you. Otherwise they won't work with you. And so I, I haven't found anything to build trust faster than influencers in the community endorsing me. And then finally, strategy number five on yeah. dominating your market is quality over quantity. So when I was doing direct mail and I still am, but I mean, when I was really ratcheting it up one year, we spent over a hundred thousand dollars. It was all about the numbers. It was like, how many pieces of mail, how many calls did we get on call rail? What was the response rate? How many, you know, it was just all KPIs and all metrics. But you know, if you think about it, Jay, I mean, how many years have you been married? Uh, 33. And it's great, right? I mean, I see the the, the joy in, in y'all's eye, right? And I've been married about 15 for me, but that is a relationship that took time. You know, so if you think, if you have a direct mail mindset, sometimes it's very transactional. And in a transactional market, you know, three, four years ago, when you go on Zillow in my market, you go to Zillow, you look at my house and it would just list how many square feet it was and what the taxes are. Now it says, get your Zillow offer. And, you know, companies like that, if they're not in your city, they will be. And it's like, I don't know, it's like the opening scene of like Braveheart. I mean, these these hedge funds can pay astronomical amounts of money for houses and they're getting really good at gobbling them up. And so if you're just sitting in the transactional seat and all you're thinking about is just quantity of leads and quantity of calls, um, you know, it's you're going to get passed by because relationships aren't price sensitive. You know, you're not leaving your wife and I'm not leaving my wife. If somebody, if a newer model just like drives by, you know, because we built that relationship over time. And so when you have a book, the secret sauce is that people get to invest with you. They get to know you, they trust you. And if somebody else comes along that can maybe make them a little bit better offer financially, it's not about the financial at that point. It's about the trust and the relationship. And that's why, um, I've never found anything more powerful in marketing. So whether you get involved in our program or somebody else's, anybody who's listening that has a business and they're getting customers, um, being involved in um, getting becoming an author is the fastest way to grow your business. So just to make sure uh, everyone understands how to implement this concept and strategy right. of quality over quantity, mm -hmm. bring that home for us, uh, Max. How do we implement this this concept of quality over quantity? Well, it's all, you know, people say, people talk about delivering value and sometimes it, you hear it so much in some circles that it's like people are rolling their eyes, but it's true. So quality is really meeting the customer where they truly are, not like where your car payment needs to be and serving them uh, for whatever it is that they need and serving them at the highest level possible. And okay, you are able to do that. Yeah. You know? Are you saying it's more important to give quality, top quality, over the top service and caring and genuine concern to fewer number of prospects yeah. than reaching out to the masses and not serving them as well. 100%. That's a great way to summarize it. Yeah. And you can do both. Um, you can still reach a ton of people, but you know, your customers are self-select who really wants to go like deeper. And, um, and when you do that, you know, you can build lifelong relationships with these customers instead of just thinking about, you know, their house as a deal. Think about it as a real relationship because the money and to your business is not on the first sale. It's in the future repeat business. So it's all about the customer experience. Every book you read, I mean, that's, that's what it's, that's what customers want is they want the experience. 
And so with a book, you stay connected to the people, you serve them at a higher level, you keep that connection going. And then it, it really, all of a sudden people just start calling you. I mean, it happens to me because these books are in circulation and, um, and people don't throw them away. I mean, think about all the people that have given you a business card, Jay, or have sent you a piece of mail that you didn't want, um, you know, to your mailbox. I mean, you probably didn't keep every one, but how many books have you thrown away? Exactly. Well, uh, I don't know anything more powerful to be used as your business card than your book. <laughs> there might be something. I just haven't found it. I mean, other than just like hypnosis or, you know, something like that. No, I think just ethical is the best way. I love it. Well, Max, we're out of time here on the show. So I know people want to connect with you and sure. I know you offered uh, a free gift or free gifts up front. So uh, how can folks take advantage of your free gift and how can they connect with you? I'm going to make it real simple. Just email me at info at savior, like our Lord and savior publishing house.com. You can also go to our website, customers chasing you.com and our contact information is on there. But if you email me, um, it's pretty simple. You can just say great show or you need to work on it. Hey, we're always open to suggestions. I'm here to serve you. Um, they get, we'll send them a copy of the book template. So if you want to get started on writing your own book, um, then we'll send you that. Um, if you want to get more information about how our book system works, we only allow a certain number of people per area. So if you want to find out if your area is available, you can reach out to us there. Um, and then I'll have a list of all my speaking. I'm going to be on the West Coast in um, March, uh, Northeast up by UJ in April. And then we'll be down in Florida for the month of May. So I'm going to be on a book tour for you know about three four months, and so if uh, I'm local to your area, stop by and um, you know hear me teach, and uh, love to meet you. But just uh, two websites: customerschasingyou.com or info at Save Your Publishing House, and just um, let me know what you what you need, and me and my assistant will uh, take care of you. That's awesome. Well, Max, thank you so much for taking the time to be here on the show with us. Um, wow, man, you're always a breath of fresh air every time I'm around you. And uh, so good to hang out with you. And thank you for sharing your expertise and what you've learned so far on what it takes to chase customers or have customers chasing you rather. Yeah, I mean, you have to experience the first one to understand how good it feels now. And when you have people calling, asking if they can work with you in a super competitive market where it seems like everybody's just running around. I promise you guys, you'll never go back. So just engage with us. And last, if you want a copy of the book, Home to Home, you can go to Amazon and buy it. Or if you send us an email uh, for the first 25 people, we'll send you a copy for free. And you can look at it and just um, you know use the format and put your, your info in and um, or just give it to a senior that you love. That's awesome. Your email one more time, Max. So info, I-N-F-O, at saviorpublishinghouse.com saviorpublishinghouse.com. Perfect. Thank you, Max. All right, folks, there you have it. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, wishing you all the best. And here's to taking your real estate investing business to the next level. We'll see you on the next show.